prices of Skoda cars and SUVs rose by unprecedented amounts during the pandemic. But this new variant hopes to help correct some of that. This is the new base version of the Skoda Karoq midsize SUV. It costs $39,990 drive away. It's less than the cheapest Toyota RAV4, and it's similarly or better equipped than most rivals, even though it's built in Europe. Is this new variant enough to put this often overlooked Czech SUV back on the map? Let's find out. The entry-level Karoq, simply called Karoq, is a permanent member of the range priced from $39,990 drive away, or $5,500 less than the next model up, Style. It is powered by a 1.4-litre turbocharged four-cylinder petrol engine, developing 110 kilowatts and 250 newton meters, driving the front wheels through an eight-speed automatic transmission. Standard equipment includes an 18-inch alloy wheels, LED headlights, front and rear parking sensors, an eight-inch touchscreen with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, an 8-inch instrument display, review camera, fabric seats, dual-zone climate control, an 8-speaker stereo, and a full suite of advanced safety technology, including lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, and rear cross-traffic alert. Compared to the style, the new base model misses out on a 10.25-inch digital instrument cluster, keyless entry, digital radio, a hands-free power tailgate, removable rear seats, wireless phone charger, and a few other items. So how do you tell this new Karoq variant apart from the other models in the range? Well, compared to the style, it's on the same 18-inch wheels and tyres, but you don't have any privacy glass on these rear windows. And these front door handles, you have to unlock yourself with the key because there's no keyless entry. Now, this Karoq is physically smaller car than most of its rivals. It's about 4.4 metres long, whereas something like a Kia Sportage and isn't X-Trail is closer to 4.7. Skoda says that makes it easier to manoeuvre in the city, but does that mean less space inside? Let's go have a look. Starting in the back first, this front seat is set up to where I drive. I'm six foot one. Now I do sit a bit closer to the wheel than some other people, but still there is a lot of space back here. Great knee room, really good headroom, lots of toe room as well. Some amenities, you've got rear air vents, a single 12 volt socket, got a fold down center armrest with some cup holders, as well as map pockets on the front seats and some pockets in the doors for bottles. Now, some other things to note, this doesn't get the Varioflex removable seats that you do find in the more expensive style but I don't think it's such a big deal. You've got really, really good comfort from the seat bench, great fabric, it's a little bit flat, but other than that, it is pretty good. Big windows too, to help kids see out on a long drive. Got some scratchy plastics up here, though the armrests are pretty soft. Yeah, pretty nice space to spend time overall. Let's head to the front. Now, what don't you get compared to a normal Karak style? Well, there's no 10.25 inch full digital instrument display, just an eight inch screen, it does the job well and information is still pretty clear. There's no wireless phone charging, no drive mode selector, and there's no digital radio, but none of those things are really essential. You still get dual zone climate control, a really nice cabin, a leather wrapped steering wheel, these really comfy fabric front seats, have decent support, and are pretty comfortable on a long drive too. There's nothing here that really screams base model or price stripper to try and hit that low price. Other than that, Amenities are really good. You've got, as I said, dual zone climate, good storage bases, small slots under here, sliding front armrests. Glove box is pretty roomy too. And you've got decent space in the door pockets. Other things to note, you've got some nice storage space on top of the dash. Two USB-C ports, one 12 volt socket. The eight speaker sound system is pretty decent, though again, it's not the world's best, but it's not a premium audio system. We don't expect top class audio. Overall, it's a really, really nice cabin. And yeah, not a whole lot to complain about. Nice, simple, does the job well. It doesn't really feel like this is a base model or that it's been stripped out to try and hit that sharp price. In the boot, Skoda claims 521 litres of space, which is really, really good for a medium SUV, even though, as I said before, this car is physically smaller on the outside. On the floor, you've got a spare wheel. Not an alloy spare, but it is pretty close to the full-size spare wheels on the car. Other things, some pockets on the side, some little bag hooks here and there, and of course, those seats fold down 60-40 for more space, with a little ski port in the middle for fitting longer items, planks of wood, skis, things like that. Let's go for a drive. On the road in the car, and it's safe to say that this is a really, really pleasant car to drive. That 1.4 litre turbo engine doesn't really sound like much, but it's got 110 kilowatt, 250 newton meters. It's more than enough power to get this car along, and it never really feels like it's out of breath or it's wanting for grunt on the open road. And that turbo means it's really flexible around town. It's just a really nice car to drive, and you don't feel like you really need a bigger engine. That engine is made to an eight speed automatic transmission. Now, it's not a dual clutch like some other cars in the Skoda and Volkswagen range just a normal torque converter, that's actually a good thing. It doesn't shift quite as quickly as the dual clutch, but there's no hesitation off the mark. It's really smooth, it's really easy to get along with. There's no, there's no quirks you have to drive around. It's just really, really good. In terms of suspension, it's really well tuned. It's a great balance between comfort and control. Uh, it's not as soft as a Toyota RAV4, but it's also not as 
stiff like, say, a Carox Sportline or some other sporty cars in Skoda's range. It's comfy over bumps, really, really composed and settled at high speed. So sometimes over really nasty sections of road in the city, it can feel a little bit busy um, because of those 18 inch wheels. But at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world. And to be honest, it's a really, really good balance and I'm really happy with how it's set up. Now, in terms of handling, that is pretty good too. There is some body roll as you'd expect, but overall it is really nice. The steering is light, but also quite direct. So it's quite easy to get along with, quite composed on a country road. And overall, there's not a whole lot to complain about. It's just a really, really pleasant car to drive. In terms of wind noise and tire noise on the freeway, there is some tire roar on course chip surfaces, but it's not too bad. Uh, and you can probably just drown the stereo out to get around it. Uh, and on some really rough and really poorly surfaced roads around town, it's a little bit boomy. Like you can hear some noises coming up from the suspension, but it's again, not the end of the world and it isn't the worst we've ever experienced. In terms of fuel economy, we've been seeing anywhere from six to eight liters per hundred kilometers on this initial launch drive. Now it's hard to get a true gauge because we're doing things from testing on the highway to city use to trying its performance on a mountain road. But from our past testing of a Carox style, which is the same engine as this car, as well as the same wheels and tires, we've saw in the low seven liter per hundred kilometer range, which is really, really good. Though keep in mind, you do need 95 octane premium fuel for this car or better. You can't run 91 octane regular and let it like you can in some Japanese and Korean rivals with two liter engines and different transmissions. Other things to note, the turning circle, only 10.2 meters is really small for a medium SUV. That's closer to a small hatchback than something else you see in this class. Visibility is really good at the front, side and rear. The mirrors are pretty big as well. And the, the calibration of the throttle and the brake pedals aren't too sensitive. They're really easy to get along with intra-city traffic. They're not grabby or too touchy or anything like that. It is really good. This model here, you can flick the shifter into sport mode, uh, but there are no drive modes to vary things up. But that's okay. This is a base model medium SUV. We don't expect sports car handling or sports car levels of customization. All right, let's head to the verdict. So there you go, the new entry level Skoda Karok. It's really, really compelling at this $40,000 price. It's great to drive, surprisingly roomy inside, great technology. And if you're looking at a base model RAV4, Kia Sportage, Mazda CX-5, something in this category, this is definitely worth a look. If you enjoyed this video, please click like to stay up to date with all of our latest videos, hit subscribe, and of course, head over to drive.com.au for the link in the description to read the full written review.